Hey, my friends, welcome back to The Liz Wheeler Show. If you haven't already subscribed to my show, would you do so? Just pick up your smartphone, bring up Spotify, bring up Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video version of the show, go to youtube.com slash Liz Wheeler. Hit that subscribe button. Also, if you hit the bell, I can notify you every time we drop a new episode, Monday through Friday. Every time we have a new interview, a new video clip for you, we have lots of content. If you want the fully uncensored version of the video show, then head over to rumble.com slash Liz Wheeler. No censorship, no YouTube type censorship has to happen over there. I really appreciate everybody who has been subscribing to the show. So please, please keep that up. Have you ever observed, just stood there and watched when someone is caught in a lie? It might be, and I, I, this is not a moral commentary on it, but it might be one of the funniest things. If you're able to sort of back away from the situation, even if you are the one engaging in the conversation, if you're able to back away from it and just observe the person who is caught in a lie, it is one of the most hysterical things because the person's nervous system just goes wild. Like their face turns red, they stop blinking, their eyes get really wide, their pupils dilate. They usually start doing some weird tick with their hands. Like they either gesture far too emphatically to be sincere or or they they lean forward and they stutter a lot. It's it's actually quite comical what happens to the human body when the, when you are caught in a lie, when a human being is caught in a lie. And it's particularly funny when those caught in a lie are real liars. Like I'm not talking about telling a little white lie and then getting caught up in it. Not that that's a good thing, but I'm talking about corrupt politicians. I'm talking about media talking heads who have propagated outright propaganda to the harm of the American people. When those people get caught in a lie, I highly recommend that you take all the enjoyment that you can possibly get in watching these people combust on air as they are faced with irrefutable evidence that everything that they told us about January 6th was a bald-faced lie. From now on, our attitude about the mainstream media and Democrat politicians, and by the way, this is not just Democrats, there are a lot of Republican politicians that I'm talking about as well, our attitude towards everything they say should not just be skepticism or verify. It should be the assumption. We should assume that what they are saying is a bold-faced lie intended to slander the reputation of American citizens in order to leverage the power of the federal government, weaponize the government against innocent citizens to push a Marxist agenda unless irrefutably proven otherwise. That should be our baseline assumption here, our baseline assumption. So after Tucker Carlson aired the January 6th tapes that Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, gave Tucker's team, they, this was video footage that was taken around the Capitol on January 6th, that Nancy Pelosi had hidden from us, the American public, that the January 6th committee had hidden from us, the American public, in their so-called investigation, which was not an investigation. The response from the media was the funniest darn thing that you will ever see. The response from the politicians who were caught in their lies. They told us it was a deadly insurrection. They told us protesters murdered police officers. They told us the protesters, the people that broke into the Capitol were armed. They told us this was a coup. They told us it was an insurrection when none of those things were true. They told us Trump coordinated the violence. They told us Trump incited the violence. They told us Trump refused to condemn the violence, all of which was false, untrue, untrue, untrue. And then when their lies about Ray Epps were exposed, when their lies about the Capitol Police were exposed, what did they do? Well, I have some videos I wanna show you today that I think you will get a kick out of because nothing is funnier than when bad people who told harmful lies are caught in the middle of their lie. Let's get to it. Okay, guys, I don't know about you, but going to bed at a decent hour when I actually manage to pull that off doesn't always mean that I get a good night's sleep. Often, I was too hot or I was too cold, and the result was that I woke up a lot. It was very non-restful sleep because I was just uncomfortable. That all changed with my cozy earth bedding. It is the softest, most luxurious, and responsibly sourced bedding on the planet. I know, I'm always raving about cozy earth bedding, but I am not alone here. There are over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website, like this one from Allison. Let me read it to you. She says, I love them. 
the softest, most comfortable sheets I have ever slept on. My friends, I have Cozy Earth sheets on my bed at my house right now. I've shared this with you. Uh, I do frequently share this with you because I love them and I know you will too. Cozy Earth bedding is made using only the finest bamboo, which makes it no wonder that top designers choose Cozy Earth because their bedding is naturally temperature regulating. So you'll sleep comfortably all year round. I do. Whether it's their luxury sheets or their loungewear or their pajamas or their plush bath towels, you will love shopping at Cozy Earth. And now you can order their bedding in five awesome colors. Also, I got a great deal for you. You can save 35% now on Cozy Earth. Just go to CozyEarth.com slash Liz35 and be sure to enter Liz35 at checkout to save 35%. That's CozyEarth.com slash Liz35. CozyEarth.com slash L-I-Z-3-5. Okay. So in our parade of liars today, these Democrats and mainstream media talking ads and some Republicans, let's not leave out the Republican squishes who might as well be Democrats and are actually mainstream media talking heads now or corporate media talking heads now. First in our line is Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. This was Chuck Schumer on the floor of the United States Senate responding to Tucker Carlson airing the January 6th tapes. Last night, Millions of Americans tuned in to one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on cable television. With contempt for the facts, disregard of the risks, and knowing full well he was lying, lying to his audience, Fox News host Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not a violent insurrection by diving deep into the waters of conspiracy and cherry picking from thousands of hours of security footage, Mr. Carlson told the bold faced lie that the Capitol attack, which we all saw with our own eyes, was somehow not an attack at all. He tried to argue it was nothing more than a peaceful sightseeing tour. Can you imagine? A nonviolent demonstration a perfectly fine and appropriate instance of people expressing their opinion. I, so many others who were here in the Capitol, and millions and millions of Americans are just furious with Tucker Carlson and Kevin McCarthy today. Many of my staff were here at the Capitol on January 6th. Their lives were put in danger, as were the lives of many of my colleagues, as well as police, maintenance staff, reporters, countless others. At one point, I was within 30 feet of the rioters. One of them, I was told, shouted out, let's get him. Before my detail pulled me away and we ran in the other direction. To say January 6th was not violent is a lie, a lie pure and simple. I don't think I've ever seen a primetime cable news anchor manipulate his viewers the way Mr. Carlson did last night. I don't think I've ever seen an anchor treat the American people and American democracy with such disdain. <laughs> if, if Chuck Schumer has never seen a primetime cable news host manipulate his viewers, then I suggest, Senator Schumer, that you turn on CNN because every day, all day, this is what CNN does. We'll actually get to the videos of CNN in a moment because they're almost as funny as Senator Chuck Schumer, who you could literally see the smoke coming out of his ears. He is furious. He's not furious because Tucker Carlson disregarded the risks as he contended. He made this allegation in his little rebuttal because Tucker Carlson's team asked the Capitol Police, is there anything that we're going to air that would cause danger to any members of Congress or staff? Is there anything that would compromise the security of the Capitol? And there was one aspect that the Capitol Police identified as something that they did not want shown to the American public, and that was the details of the security of a specific door. And so Tucker Carlson's team blurred out the details of the security of that specific door. Otherwise, the Capitol Police said, no, nothing you're showing is going to inherently pose a risk. Chuck Schumer, as always, doesn't care about the facts. He doesn't care about the truth. He's just mad because he's caught in the most enormous lie. The Democrats and the mainstream media like to call anybody, like you and like me, who felt that some felt something fishy 
around November of 2020. They like to call that the big lie. Well, I'd like to propose a name tonight for what the Democrats have done surrounding that election and January 6th. They have propagated an enormous lie, capital E, capital L, enormous lie. Every single thing that they have told us about January 6th is an enormous lie and they have been caught in that lie. And so what does Senator Chuck Schumer do in response? He not only huffs and puffs on the floor of the U.S. Senate, as the majority leader of the United States Senate, which means that this behavior is all the more shameful because he should have an understanding and a a value, he should place value on our constitutionally protected right to free speech and freedom of the press, the majority leader of the United States Senate called for a journalist to be censored because that journalist was airing a story that disproved the senator's lies. Take a look at this. These lies continue tonight. Rupert Murdoch, who has admitted they were lies and said he regretted it, has a special obligation to stop Tucker Carlson from going on tonight now that he's seen how he has perverted and slimed the truth and from letting him go on again and again and again not because their views deserve such a proprium, but because our democracy depends on it. Also, Senator Chuck Schumer said that the lives of his staff, the lives of people in the Capitol were put in danger. This is part of the enormous lie. This this narrative that the left propagates that this was a deadly insurrection. The protesters, even those who committed vandal, even those who were riotous, even those who misbehaved or perhaps broke minor laws, were not deadly. They did not cause anybody to die. But the Capitol Police caused Ashley Babbitt to die, and the Capitol Police mishandled Roseanne Boyland, and the other people that died, died of either drug overdoses or natural causes. But let's be very, very clear about the facts here. The protesters, even those who broke into the Capitol on January 6th, killed no one. Chuck Schumer doesn't care about that, of course. He doesn't care about the truth at all. He wants cable news channels to censor hosts who aren't propagating any narrative, but are simply showing the video that was recorded around the Capitol on January 6th. So then we pivot over to CNN. CNN is freaking out. CNN had as their expert on this, Ken Burns, who is one of the biggest, loudest, wrongest propagators of the Russia collusion hoax that you can possibly imagine. I mean, this guy has been disproved more years than I've been alive. He, I'm I'm shocked he even has the courage to put his face on a television screen. That's what a big liar he is. And he is also, I mean, he's caught in a lie. And so how do people caught in lies behave? They get all agitated. They try to turn it around. They get kind of smug, but they're kind of twitchy. They're kind of red. You can tell that the veins in their head are just just uncomfortable because physiologically, their bodies and their minds know that they're lying. Take a look at this. That DeSantis and others are doing limit our ability to understand who we are and are not inclusive. They're exclusive. They're they're narrowing the focus of what is and isn't American history. It's terrifying. It feels like a Soviet system or, you know, the way the Nazis would build a Potemkin village. Tucker Carlson's doing the same thing with the footage from one uh, six. It's just uh, a, a kind of rewriting of history at the most dangerous level. It's 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 huge threat to our republic. He's he's perching on the edge of his chair. He's so agitated, trying to use a calm voice, but he's perching. He's 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 right on the edge because he's been the lie. He's lying. He's been lying for the past couple of years, and he's been caught in this lie. And it is the most hilarious thing to see these Democrats, to see these mainstream media pundits caught in their lie. I got to tell you though, my very favorite of these these people, these politicians, and these politicos who were caught in a lie. My very favorite reaction is also on CNN. It's actually a Republican, though, not a Democrat, a Republican congressman who, when he did not win his reelection, he became part of CNN's apparatus. I'm, of course, talking about Adam Kinzinger, and I'm gonna show you that video in just a second, but first I wanna talk to you about Patriot Software. Patriot Software is great. Patriot Software creates accounting and payroll software that radically simplifies the day-to-day complexities that American businesses like mine and their accountants face. Patriot's powerful accounting and payroll software is fast, it's simple, 
and affordable, and it helps you keep your most scarce resources, time and money. Patriot understands American businesses because of its own humble beginnings in a cold, wet basement of a factory. We can all relate to that, right? Patriot software is obsessed with seeing your business succeed because when it does, families are blessed, communities thrive, and our country gets stronger. Patriot software was voted number one for ease of use, customer support features, and the value of money by users, people who know. So go to patriotsoftware.com and try the accounting and payroll software for free for 60 days when you use my promo code, Liz. You do have to use my promo code. And you can see for yourself why tens of thousands of business owners and their accountants trust Patriot Software. Just go to patriotsoftware.com, use my promo code, Liz, and you can try the accounting and payroll software for free for 60 days. Patriotsoftware.com, promo code, Liz. Okay, so former Congressman Adam Kinzinger, remember the crying man? Uh, Who can forget? Who can forget when Adam Kinzinger started to shed tears because of January 6th. Well, he looked like he was on the verge of tears now. His face was all splotchy and puffy and he was huffing and puffing. His breath was real high in his chest because that's what liars do. That's how liars breathe. Their bodies know they're lying. And this is how he reacted when these tapes proved him to be a liar. Take a look. I I think so. Look, I think that in terms of history, nobody that believes any of that garbage Tucker was spewing, none of their kids will ever believe that garbage. And in fact, I think in five or 10 years, the people that believe the garbage today that have kids will never admit to their kids that they believed it. Because I think we set history straight on the committee. Um, But today, there are people that are so invested in the emotional politics and tribe that if Tucker gives them a narrative to hold on to that makes their side look okay, they're gonna hold on to that, unfortunately. Adam, he also invoked the committee several times, saying essentially, you know, this is access, the footage that you had access to, parts of it that the committee did not air. Um, do you want to respond to that? And also, you know, that he's, he, he said you were, or you were a liar, and Liz Cheney was a liar, and that you guys perpetuated this lie. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, Everybody knows, even in their heart, even those that think that uh, or that will say out loud that the insurrection didn't happen, they know in their heart that it did. So you can call me a liar all you want. I just know that means we're over the target, typically. Um, Look, I I can look at myself in the mirror. I know Tucker Carlson, he has a lot more money than I do, but it's probably much harder for him to wake up and look in the mirror uh, because he knows what he's doing to a country that I've sworn to defend both in uniform and in Congress that he's never taken that similar oath. So that's fine. Not everybody has to take that oath, but he hasn't. And I think that's clear. But look, in terms of saying that we've hidden this footage, oh, we had one of the most transparent uh, hearings in history with the most footage we've ever shown in history. And every single almost uh, witness that came in front of us was a very partisan witness. They were all Republicans that came in front of this committee. (laughs) I like how you turn that. I hope you guys caught Don Lemon's very creepy chuckling at the end of that. <laughs> he says, I like how you I like how you turned that around. Apparently, Adam Kinzinger broke news because apparently I didn't know, maybe you knew, that Adam Kinzinger was God, that he can just peer into our hearts and he can tell what we truly believe in our hearts, regardless of what's coming out of our mouths. And he can tell, he can look into the future. He must be, he must be omnipresent. He can look into the future and tell what our children will believe and how we will be thinking years down the road. And he also can look over Tucker Carlson's shoulder right now and tell how Tucker Carlson feels when he looks in a mirror. Adam Kinzinger is one of the most pathetic Republicans who has ever, that we have ever had the misfortune of temporarily having within our party. He has found a suitable home on CNN. He's a liar and he knows that he's lying, and you can tell by the way that he is acting, by his presentation. He is presenting as someone who is caught in an enormous lie. And so he resorts to levying ad hominems. Oh, Tucker Carlson must not be credible because he never took an oath to defend the country. Okay, that has nothing to do with anything. Thank you for your service, but what does that have to do with whether or not Tucker Carlson airs videotape from the Capitol? Tucker Carlson didn't invent that. He's airing it. What was invented is the enormous lie that the Democrats tried to tell us. So then we have another Republican. We have Mitch McConnell. Unfortunately, the minority leader, he's Republican, of the United States Senate has sided with Democrats. Maybe you're not surprised because it's Mitch McConnell. Maybe you are surprised because you think, who could possibly be this stupid that in the face of videotapes from the Capitol that 
obviously and irrefutably disprove the enormous lie that Democrats have told us about January 6th? Who could be so stupid as to say what Mitch McConnell says? Take a listen. It was a mistake, in my view, for Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at the Capitol thinks. And by the way, note who was standing behind him. That's uh, Senator Thune and Senator Joni Ernst. They just stand behind him like his little lackeys, like his little minions, just listing and gobbling up every silly word that he says. Seriously, you have to wonder about this guy. Mitch McConnell, are you so stupid that you have not observed the federal law enforcement apparatus for the past, what, since 2015? That's 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, the past eight years, the federal law enforcement apparatus and the intelligence community have been proved to weaponize the power of the federal government against conservatives because they're conservative against Trump because the deep state liberals, leftists, I don't even want to call them liberals, the deep state leftists in these agencies of the federal government are so rabidly anti-Trump that they're willing to abuse their power as government officials and violate the constitutionally protected rights of private citizens because of political disagreements. How can Mitch McConnell stand there after this has unfolded under his very eyes for the past almost decade now and have confidence, pretend to have confidence in the analysis of federal law enforcement over January 6th when 61% of the American people, Republicans and Democrats, believe that the feds played a role in staging and encouraging and provoking what happened on January 6th. I'm sorry, I do not buy that Mitch McConnell is that stupid. What I believe is that Mitch McConnell is compromised. Mitch McConnell isn't really conservative. Mitch McConnell has done some great things and I've given him credit in the past for it. There's even been times in his career where he's been kind of likable. His cocaine Mitch thing, when when, when someone accused him of trafficking cocaine, he co-opted that insult, um, or at least his communications team did, his social media team did, and gave him the nickname Cocaine Mitch as a compliment versus as an insult. That was pretty funny. That was kind of in the tradition of what we do in America. You know, when the British called us Yankee Doodles, we wrote a song about it. We appropriated that insult and made it a compliment. That's what Cocaine Mitch did. And that was, that was pretty likable. That was pretty relatable. That was a pretty savvy political move. When Mitch McConnell helped confirm onto the federal judiciary, all those Trump nominees, when there were so many vacancies on our, in our court systems after the Obama years, that was pretty great. Without Mitch McConnell, we wouldn't have the Supreme Court that we have. And without Mitch McConnell, Roe v. Wade would still be it wouldn't have been overturned. And I give Mitch McConnell credit for that, but that does not take away from the reality that Mitch McConnell is not conservative. Mitch McConnell is a skilled politician who happened to choose the Republican Party as his party, not because he shares values, but just because he needed a club team. This is the side that he chose. And when the party apparatus is propagating an establishment narrative that is really more in line with the Democrats' party values, Mitch McConnell sides with them. He doesn't side with you and I, who look at what happened on January 6th and say, wait a second, who look at what happened in November of 2020 and say, well, hold on there just a moment. Mitch McConnell has the same agenda here as the Democrats. It's shocking. It's disappointing. And it's perfectly clear to me what the American people should do. We should, be, we should be keeping track of every politician who buys into the Democrat, the enormous lie the Democrats are propagating about January 6th, the enormous lie they're propagating about the November 2020 presidential election, and we should vote them out. I don't care how long the person served. I don't care if they've done good things in the past. If they do not have the fire in their belly to fight this fight now, out they go. One of the questions that I I discussed with you last night when we were talking, or yesterday, I should say, yesterday when we were unpacking all of the videotape that Tucker Carlson had aired, as I said, the video of the so-called QAnon shaman, this, this young man named Jacob Chansley who became the mascot, for lack of a better word, the mascot of 
what happened on January 6th. And the mascot, what I mean by that is the media portrayed this guy who was dressed up in this ridiculous getup. You've all seen him, the guy with the horns. They made him the mascot because they wanted to portray all protesters and anyone who felt that there might've been something fishy in November of 2020, they wanted to portray everyone as being as nutty and crazy as this guy. Well, Jacob Chansley has been sentenced to four years in prison, but video that Tucker Carlson aired yesterday showed us that the Capitol Police were with Jacob Chansley most of the time that he was in the Capitol and they did nothing. They didn't say, hey dude, you can't be in here. Let me escort you to the door. They never tried to direct him. They actually tried to open doors for him. Like they were, they were his tour guides. They, and they never arrested him, anything. And it wasn't, it wasn't, I know that there are some people saying, well, they were just acting defensively. They were trying to be buddy-buddy so that it didn't escalate. No, no. I've seen police officers in that situation. And even though their tones of voice are soft and soothing and calm and friendly and collegial, their bodies are tensed and ready for escalation at a moment's notice. But want, go watch that tape again with Jacob Chansley. That's not how the police officers were reacting. These police officers were unconcerned with Jacob Chansley. They were not worried that he was going to commit violence. They were certainly not worried that he was armed. Their bodies weren't even facing towards him. They were talking amongst themselves. And my question in yesterday's show was, did Jacob Chansley's lawyer have access to this videotape? Because this is exculpatory evidence. He was sentenced to four years in prison, convicted of crimes after they coerced him into pleading guilty. Did they have access to this tape? Was this part of his trial? And Jacob Chansley's lawyer answered that question on Twitter today. And I'm gonna read you his answer in just a second. But first I wanna to talk to you about Upside. Now, something you may not know about me, but I frequently redecorate, redecorate rooms in my house, which is an extremely fun, but also expensive hobby, especially with all the price hikes lately. And that's why I wanna tell you about my favorite new app. It's called Upside. And it's a really incredible app for anybody, whether you spend money on redecorating your hobbies, buying gas, buying groceries, dining out. With the Upside app, I get cash back on every purchase that I can use to you know, buy things, food or, or stuff to redecorate with. It's basically cash back just for doing what you were gonna do anyway. It helps you offset inflated prices by giving you cash back on purchases. And the app, by the way, super easy to use to get started. You just download the free Upside app. You can use my promo code Liz5 and you can get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. Here's how it works. You just claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Then you pay as usual with a credit or debit card, follow the steps in the app and voila, you get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars a year. So download the free Upside app, use promo code Liz5 to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using promo code Liz5, but first you have to download the free Upside app. Okay, so Jacob Chansley's attorney Posted on Twitter, I wanna bring this exact quote up. I wanna bring this tweet up right now. Um, this is what he posted. He said, my client, Jake Chansley, was a big part of Tucker's first big rollout of video tonight. He posted this on the first night. He said, there's a story behind beyond just the fact that the government had video Jake's attorney never looked at. Jake is set to be released from custody soon. He's going to tell his story but Jake has also committed himself to helping me raise money so I can get into cases for January 6th defendants earlier than I was able to get into his. I've spent 20 or more hours talking to Jake by phone. He's a very interesting young man and I look forward to meeting him in person. It is quite fortuitous that these videos are coming out around the same time as he might first be able to address them himself. So first I want to establish the fact that this video, think about this the video of the QAnon shaman, who is supposedly the ringleader, the mascot of this deadly insurrection. We saw the video and it disproved it. It disproved it all. This video was not used in his trial. This is exculpatory evidence, which Jacob Chansley has a constitutional right to access, a constitutional right to be provided with if it's not something that's in his possession. And it wasn't used in his trial. And so I pose this question to you, is that fair? Is that just? Or is this one of the largest, most significant, egregious miscarriages of justice in modern American history? And these young men are ignored. They're not only ignored by the left, they're ignored by these squishes on the right who say, I don't care if these, if these guys rot in prison, look at what they did, they desecrated the Capitol. Well, you might not like how he dressed, you might not like what he was shouting, 
but to incarcerate him for four years on federal charges when he was deprived of exculpatory evidence? How is this not a mistrial? How is this not immediately overturned? This is, this is wrongdoing in the highest degree. And there are some people who say, well, his attorney had access to this, what's called global discovery. Global discovery is a deposit of maybe all 44,000 hours of tape from around the Capitol, and it's under protective order, so the use of it is very limited. Only certain people are allowed to access it. It's not allowed to be broadcast to many people in the courtroom, et cetera, et cetera. It's, 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 it's need-to-know basis. But here's the thing. That may be true. We don't know yet if this was part of a global uh, global discovery deposit, but that has never been adequate in the history of legal precedent in our country. When there is a deposit this large, a single attorney, a single counselor does not have access to watch 44,000 of video, 44,000 hours of video footage. Tucker Carlson's team, for example, you think there was one person just sitting there and watching day, day in and night, day and night, day and night? Of course not. There was a team of people who were scraping through this video simultaneously. So instead of it taking one hour, they were probably watching it quickly. They were, they were all watching different parts of it. And it required a team funded by a new, the largest news organization, the largest cable news organization in our country, the top rated show on the largest cable news organization in our country. A single attorney for a single defendant doesn't have the capacity to do that. And this has been largely understood and acknowledged by judges throughout the course of legal history in our country. But suddenly, just for this case, Jacob Chansley and other January 6th defendants, that tradition in our legal history was discarded. So it's more or less a technicality. Even if this video footage was part of a global discovery deposit, that's not enough. And that global discovery deposit wasn't available at the beginning. It's only been added to since then. It was never even an option for Jacob Chansley's lawyer to have full access to all of the possible evidence, evidence that could turn out to be exculpatory evidence. The enormous lie that the Democrats have told about January 6th is ignoring the fact that right now there are approximately three dozen political prisoners incarcerated by the federal government without trial, pre-trial still. Jacob Chansley was coerced into, into pleading guilty, but other young men are sitting, rotting in prison cells right now without a trial, without a conviction, without access to exculpatory evidence against the charges that have been levied against them based on the enormous lie that Democrats and the mainstream media have told us about January 6th that has been proven to be a lie. Tucker Carlson aired more videotapes too, because one of the questions we've all had since January 6th of 2021 is, how did this even happen? There were people that broke into the Capitol. There were, there were people that wrongly broke glass. There were people that were agitating against police. I don't know anybody in the conservative movement that denies that. What we do is we properly order what that is compared to the hyperbolic and false allegations that the left offers us. The left says, all the protesters were violent and this was encouraged by Trump and incited and none of that is true. It wasn't, there wasn't murder that was committed. These people weren't armed. There was some vandalism. There was some glass breaking. There was some agitation with police and I don't think anybody's justifying that. But the punishment that's being levied against the individuals, even the individuals that did the wrong things, it's nowhere near equal to the crime that was committed. And everybody who is a person of good faith and a person of honesty, a person who is seeking the truth, understands that. It's only the people that are lying that deny the reality of that. So Tucker Carlson answered, or the video footage that Tucker Carlson aired, really, this wasn't Tucker's opinion, the video footage answered the question of how did this happen? How, how were the police force, the Capitol Police, which are charged, this, they're under the helm of the Speaker of the House, and they're charged with protecting the Capitol and Congress and, con and congressional staff and families of, of, of members of Congress, how were they so unaware of this and unprepared for this? Like, isn't their job securing this building? And Tucker Carlson sat down with a high-ranking individual in the Capitol Police who was essentially responsible for the security of this area, the security of members of Congress, the security of the, um, the electoral college vote certification, and more smoke and guns were revealed. Take a listen. 
Once protesters moved inside the building, Johnson's first concern was the safety of senators. His job was to protect them. In rising panic, he called over the radio for direction and assistance. Even now, two years later, he is baffled by the response he got. I was requesting permission to evacuate the Senate side, um, the Senate chambers, um, because I had a clear line of sight to get them out the Senate door, and I didn't get permission. Um, the dispatcher called a couple times to see if I can get permission. No response. With Yogananda Pittman and his other supervisors unresponsive, Johnson says he decided to begin the evacuation of senators himself. The person that I thought was going to authorize the evacuation didn't do it. I wanted to get those members of Congress out as quickly as I could. That's why I initiated um, you know, those evacuations. Me being disciplined, um, it wasn't as important as not getting the members of Congress and their staff to safety. Footage we reviewed seems to bolster Johnson's account. The video shows Johnson conducting the evacuation of senators from the chamber. Yet Tark Johnson was not rewarded for what he did. He was punished. A photo emerged of Johnson wearing a MAGA hat outside the Capitol. That picture cost him his career. Sometimes I look at it and like, thank you, God, for blessing me with this hat. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I wish this hat never came in my life. A Biden voter, Johnson says he donned the hat in an effort to rescue fellow officers he believed were trapped in the building. I figured if I had the hat on, it'll be easier for me to navigate my way through the crowd. It was um, basically self-preservation and um, de-escalation, um, and I needed to get up those steps. I couldn't say what would have happened walking through that crowd without it. But for the crime of wearing a Trump hat, Johnson found himself suspended. Ultimately, he resigned from the force and lost his pension. He now works part-time as a furniture mover. Yogananda Pittman, meanwhile, thrived. Two days after January 6th, Nancy Pelosi elevated Pittman to acting chief of the Capitol Police. Late last year, Pittman took a high-paying job as the head of security at UC Berkeley, which is right outside Pelosi's congressional district. Berkeley announced Pittman's hiring with unqualified praise for her, quote, steadfast commitment to social justice. Pittman herself boasted about her heroic performance on January 6th. Her department, she said, quote, saved democracy that day. We reached out to Yogananda Pittman for comment, but she didn't get back to us. A Capitol Police officer who was in charge of the security for the certification of the Electoral College. This is what we're seeing. This, the person who was supposed to give authorization for the evacuation of members of Congress did not respond to this Capitol Police officer. Did not respond. His boss, who, um, his boss ignored him when he called for help over the radio. Ignored him. The entire Capitol Police force was inadequately prepared, which is funny to me because a couple weeks ago, we were talking to Julie Kelly, you remember this episode, and she reminded us that Nancy Pelosi's own staffer said that they were preparing for January 6th as early as the previous summer. Preparing for January 6th, not because they were preparing for the certification of the Electoral College, but preparing for protests, and potential riots and potential violence. So how is it that a staff member of a member of Congress was aware of a potential threat, but the Capitol Police, who are also under the direction of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, was unaware? The only explanation for that is it was a deliberate choice. It was a deliberate choice for Nancy Pelosi to discuss the possibility of violence planned for January 6th with her staff and a deliberate choice by Nancy Pelosi not to inform the Capitol Police, not to adequately prepare the Capitol Police to allow what happened to happen. And then this Capitol Police officer was fired after he wore the Make America Great Again hat that someone in the crowd had put on his head and he used at his, as his free pass to get through the crowd without being harassed. The responsibility for all of this falls on one person. The responsibility for this falls on Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is very conspicuously absent from the narratives surrounding January 6th. It's Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney and Chuck Schumer and all the Democrats and all the mainstream media talking heads who are talking about January 6th and Nancy Pelosi remains very tight-lipped. She deliberately remains in the background. It seems she's very quiet. Why is that? 
Perhaps it's because Nancy Pelosi played a larger role than even we can imagine in everything that happened from the Capitol Police's inadequate preparation for January 6th to the probable federal involvement in January 6th that 61% of the American people believe occurred. And these videotapes prove that this enormous lie that was built by Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats is coming crashing down. This is what happens when liars are exposed. This is the ruling class we're talking about. When we talked to Dr. James Lindsay three weeks ago, I believe now, and he talked about how wokeness is is operated like a cult. The radical left right now who has embraced, embraced wokeness as their party platform, they're operating like an actual cult. They have the lowest level of cult membership is like the water carriers. They're called the outer circle. And they they have perhaps bought into just the very shallow talking points. You know, they might say Black Lives Matter. They might even say abolish the police or defund the police, but they don't really know what they're saying. They just kind of post that black square on Instagram because they're virtue signaling. But they're really, they're really just the dupes. They're really just naive. They're kind of the victims of the cult, honestly, even though they seem annoying to us. They're they're the victims. That's the outer circle. And then you have the inner circle who have bought into the ideology, but they're not directing the whole, the whole operation. But they do understand that it's not just, oh, Black Lives Matter, that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization, and that's the intention of it. And then you have the leaders. The leaders of the cult are the people who understand that Marxism is but a means to their ends, a means to the ends of political control and wealth a means to complete control over everybody's lives. And Nancy Pelosi is one of the leaders in the woke cult. Nancy Pelosi is at the nucleus of everything that we're talking about. And very conspicuously, she's absent from all of these conversations. We see Adam Kinzinger and Ken Burns and Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell all of these different individuals, we see them getting caught in this lie, and it's amusing. It's funny to see someone caught in a lie when they're such an egregious liar that there is a, a there is a bit of delight you find when you see them so uncomfortable, when you see them getting all physically agitated because there's nothing they can do to convince you that they didn't lie because the video has irrefutably proven that they're liars. But Nancy Pelosi. All of my questions about January 6th, all of the questions about January 6th can be answered by one woman, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is the center of all of this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.